What's up, everybody? It's Dr. Look a lot of Pussy Force Radio. It's insane. It's the night of Skinny Puppy the concert. And we got Pira here. And we got Ogre here. Doing hey. the motherfucking thing. How you doing, motherfucker? Pretty good, thanks, man. How you doing? Good, thank you. God, it's been a long time since I've seen One you. Year. One year. One year. Do One I look year. older? Sorry? Do I look older? A little bit. Yeah. You can say a little bit. That's okay. You looked older earlier when you came up in the walker. I certainly did, yeah. <laughs> oh, that was See, awesome. I, that's, that's, that's the secret to theater. It's like make yourself look as disgusting as possible while on stage. And on soft stage, you're like a doll. Okay. You know what's funny? The last time I was in here, I was actually stage managing, doing a rehearsal here. For who? For, um, it, was a, uh, it was a guy named Jeremy Waller. Ah. He does his own um, theater stuff, and it was... Uh, Play called Biographies of the Dead and Dying. Uh -huh. Showed at the Fringe Festival. Very cool. And what so, were yeah. who 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 were the dead and dying? It was basically this woman Anonymous. who was a uh, novelist, and basically she was uh, in a haunted house writing, and the ghost she was imagining the ghost talking to her, but we had another actor uh, portraying the ghost, and then she ended up just committing suicide. Wow. But it was a really theatrical play great lighting it was very avant-garde very different so like it was funny like when you came out I'm like oh my god this is similar to like when we were here like, when I was here last time so it's very theatrical is what you're saying very Ultimately. theatrical yeah. I think the space just brings it out yeah well I think so the space I mean the lighting Tim Hill's lighting does it too I mean mm -hmm. we have we have a lot of kind of atmosphere that's creating kind of a vibe but again I haven't seen too many shows in here so I don't know but we try to we try to maintain like a not not a lot of rock show lighting and more theatrical lighting so maybe that's what you're noticing and we're using the um, the visuals and and the video stuff more is lighting too than the actual lighting rig. I really like that. I noticed like the theme of like the the the, the apparatus you had of the four screens mm -hmm. and then the way the light reflected off it. It's three dimensional. It was just so beautiful. Like, did you uh, come up? No, with that's that Tim or? Hill. That's that's Tim that's Hill. our visual guy. Who's uh, okay. he's actually from Vancouver. Oh really? Yeah, he's a visual artist from here, and he's uh, he's, he's worked with us on. Uh, Greater Wrong of the Right and Mithras and the Ogre Tour. He came on. I mean, he's he's a he's a lifetimer now. <laughs> Kick ass. Yeah, he's very good. And so he keeps evolving. And, and that's the uh, layered screen thing that you saw was kind of uh, something that he did here. At, I think at a few shows in some art galleries. So. Okay, I know you're not a racist motherfucker. That's one thing I know. Yeah. But the comb thing that looked like a KKK thing, yeah. I was like, what is this supposed to personify? The the the. Uh, a faceless idea of racism in America. Because mm, then I noticed the juxtaposition of the stars, which represented the flag, and I was thinking that might be it, right? When I when I first came right. up with the idea of the costume, it was that costume with the scarecrow mask, and the idea was kind of the the fear-driven um, side of, of 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 our unconsciousness, and and in a lot of ways, I also wanted to approach the idea of racism in America and uh, subtly. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And then when this, when when the, uh, no, no. and then when I when I when I created the costume, it, it like became more than that, and so I, I kind of um, you know abstracted a little bit and added some 70s uh, Brady Bunch pants and uh, made it yeah. all white, and then uh, and you know just kind of wanted to comment on that, and I thought it was a little too soon to be doing that, and I thought I was I might be taking a risk doing it, and then a lot of things started happening in America that, that we're exposing that, that kind of, that undercurrent of racism that still exists in the country, even though it's not really talked about openly. Mm. It's talked about, you know, in, in, through analogy and through, you know, this, you know, subtle innuendo, but it's never really directed towards anything and it's never really, you know, it's never really pointed at directly. And, and, and then it start, you know, a number of things started turning up where there's that, uh, that justice of the peace that wouldn't marry those two people because he was afraid for their children, <laughs> you know, having a mixed mixed race children, and I just started seeing aspects of of society that were just brooding underneath of this this serene kind of like yay we have a black president. Underneath it was this this thing that when it explodes it explodes very violently, mm. and, and and that to me was just a, a telling sign that you know. So I, I guess you know I'm I'm influenced by things like that. So. When I drew the costume, it, it ultimately came out as that character, and and uh, and uh, then you know the mask kind of uh, or the different layers of the mask kind of uh, peel away from this idea of a scarecrow or of this of this thing that that is is uh, is fear driven to this faceless um, entity, which is um, really where I think you know racism is right now as far as how it's projected in media and and in in. Uh, 
in in the face of American culture anyway. You know, it's it's very faceless in a way. Yeah. You know what? Don't ever second guess yourself with your art, man. If you <laughs> fucking feel the impulse. No, seriously, you. No, but I, I really thought that right? I really thought that it was pushing yeah. it a little bit. You know, I, that push that motherfucker. Well, I did. I mean, I asked a lot of my friends who who are black, and you know, I asked them if, if I was pushing it, and they said no. They said fucking. To all you motherfucking industrial haters who say, oh, there's too many. What's with all these niggers at the clubs? No offense, <laughs> black people. This is the baddest motherfucker from the motherfucking West Coast, okay? <laughs> and he has black friends, so suck on my dick, bitch. Fuck yeah. <laughs> nice one. <laughs> thank you very much. And thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> but like, tell me about like uh, the tour. How's it going so it's far? It's going good. It's our fourth show, so we're just kind of getting into it. We started out pretty strong. I mean, we have... Uh, obviously, tonight's technical problems are more about uh, the system here. I mean, we, mm. we, had, uh, we had something that blew out, so... That We've had a few. I mean, we have. Uh, does it happen here? It happened to okay. us too when we okay, were here. Okay, yeah. okay. Well, yeah, and uh, Revco had that problem where the bass kept cutting out. Right. Well, out? we were having one side popping in and out. It was a yeah. bunch of when we we had to bring in extra bass bins tonight, um, which which they did. They're very very kind, and, mm. and I have. Uh, yeah, I mean, I have full support for this type of venue in the city because it's definitely not a a Borg, um, you know, Live Nation. Yeah, house. Malice is awesome. So yeah, yeah, you know, and 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 it's uh and, and so I'm 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 all down for it. I mean, you, we we have we've always had to things where you you crash and burn and you have to get up and start again. So I mean, again, it it creates kind of a place where you can either crumble or uh, or rise to the occasion somewhat and and you know try and muscle through it and 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 that's the fun. I mean, that's the fun of love live. Well, live music in the sense that we're not we use computers, but we're still running off of you know electrical equipment and stuff like that. So it's just. Wherever it goes, I can't. I can't control it. Sometimes. Hey, man. Good job. Thank you. Hey, man. I was gonna ask about this. Okay, this is a term I came up with. Mac Industrial. M A C Industrial. <laughs> Mac Industrial. Remember when the Industrial Light was a new thing. <laughs> remember when like Psychic TV and SBK was breaking shit on stage. Yeah. Einstein's Neubauten still does that shit, right? No, they, what they don't. To that? Well, they, they don't, don't really. anymore. Well, it's not. You can't. You, you can't do like when I when actually I um. I was with Neubauten when they came to Expo here. You don't know if you remember that in '86. Back in '86, and we, yeah. We were, we, were, we were working at um, at Expo with a girl, with a woman, Myra Davies, who's okay. a, an art historian and, and kind of my mentor. And she hired us so we could get unemployment insurance. Yeah. <laughs> because we were, we were starving artists doing skinny puppy shows. Now, maybe. Yeah. And so and so she hired us as assistants, and she was doing the Kodak World Stage. Uh huh. And she brought in Neubauten. Uh huh. And she brought in Test Department to do a Ministry of Power show, mm. not just the normal Test Department show, but an actual Ministry of Power show where they involve local artists and they create this whole thing. So I was the one sent to meet Blixa Bargeld Sweet. at the airport. And of course he gravitated right towards me and the first question he asked is, do you have any speed? <laughs> I think Great impression, by the were, way. We're amphetamines. Do you have any amphetamines? <laughs> he gave me that look. <laughs> And so we were fast friends because, of course, I had amphetamines. And uh, <laughs> we ended up spending the next, uh, I think, four days. We ended up at, uh, I can't remember what the name of the club was. On, it was on Robson, this club. And uh, we ended up uh, fucking just baked out of our heads. And, uh, and I ended up going on tour with them. Mm -hmm. uh, down, down to the show, they're doing a, a, another show in Seattle. And uh, they're doing a live show in a park. And they're using <laughs> Molotov cocktails. <laughs> And uh, they're there, and and, and uh, little Molotov cocktails. But they asked me to help with the fire, and so what they did was they poured fire and gas uh, in uh, in garbage can lids and lit it on fire. And of course, one of them, sorry, one of them was going okay. out, and I went out, and uh, uh, he's getting he, somebody handed me a can of gas, and so I went out. And I, I I didn't know you had to <laughs> pour the gas oh, into God. something else and then pour it in. <laughs> so I had this spouted can, and I poured it on the gas, and the, and the flame was like. Whoosh, and it was like just a little flame on the top of the can, this full can of gas, and I was just like, and they came out, fire extinguishers, <laughs> Blix's face was covered oh, in fire fuck. retardant. Everybody, the whole, the whole thing stopped. And you I was, MJ'd the motherfucker? Yeah, and this was a live <laughs> Oh my god! And I was so fucking embarrassed. And, uh, <laughs> and, and, I, and I, was, I was just like, oh, what have I done? And I was like, I went back afterwards and I said, Blix, I'm so sorry. And he goes, oh, he goes, no, nah. he goes back in Hamburg. We use Molotov cocktails and we three used to throw them at each other. Cool. He goes, so that wasn't fucking nothing. But the point of all that is that you can't do that stuff anymore on stage. I mean, you really can't, you can't blow things up. You can't start fires. You know, everything we have up here is so fire retardant and, and, you know, everything's so up to, up to code that you have to kind of find different ways of destroying things.